team uh, just inside that God would just be magnified today that he would just be the center of our attention right now Heavenly Father our prayer Lord is that you would just be lifted up high today God higher than our worries higher than the anxieties of this world right now God this is our time to focus on you to praise you and lift you up because you are worthy you are good God and we love you we praise your name in Jesus name we pray amen
declaration and reminder that Chorus is to us as believers. That our God is greater, our God is stronger, our God is higher than anything. Our God is our healer, and he's awesome in power, and he is our God. Let's just sing those words one more time. Sing, our God is greater. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. It's running after, 
situation and today as we are dealing with riots and protesters Lord God you are going to use this situation I don't know how Lord God but you will I trust you Lord God that you will use this situation and bring us together Lord God we just want to give you glory and praise Father God and I am thankful for our church and Lord God that the governor has seen that the church is so mighty and that we need to be together, Lord God, and, and support you and do your work, Father God. Today, tomorrow, Lord God, use every person here. Let us witness, Lord God. Let us help others, Lord God. Help us to heal this nation in every single way, any minute way, Lord God, just use us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are just so amazing, and I am just so thankful that you are my Father, that you are my Father, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I'm kind of liking these outdoor services, I'll tell you. They're nice. It's so good to see you again. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for being the support for this church all through this pandemic and these past many months. It's not been easy, amen? But Jesus never said that it would be, right? Yeah, he never promised us a life without turbulence, without waves, without disruption, did he? And we are the church, and that's when we see the power of the Holy Spirit come in strength and in might. 
to give us what we need during these times. Amen. It's about these times. Can I tell you this morning that all that's going on over these months is not happening to you, but for you. For you. And none of the difficulties that ever barrel into our lives seem very welcomed at the time and seem like they'll do any good. But God says, I promise I will work it all to the good. I promise. So this isn't happening to you. It's for you. And that's why we're here today to be encouraged. Amen. I've got a message this morning. But before I get into it, just let me give you a little bit of the, the layout of going forward. Um, our governor has said that we can now meet at 25% capacity. Uh, that, if we're looking at our church, it's probably, capacity is about 200. So that puts us at about 50. And the idea would be to go back into the building, perhaps with two services, roughly 50 apiece, roughly, who's counting, right? Uh, but let me just say this. Uh, for a couple of reasons we're not going to rush right back into the building um i, I want to see how it goes i want to see the lay of the land i'd love if we've got you know some good weather and this is the time i mean i don't want to be out here in july it, it, it could be a little bit hot and, and that kind of thing but let's let's not just oh rush right back into the building let's take our time with this let's let people feel comfortable kind of coming together in some essence like we are doing even now uh, next week weather permitting uh nancy great bringing a chair having a seat sitting in the shade nice breeze out enjoy amen i i don't know i think the sound sounds even better the worship sound outside than it does inside <laughs> and that's nothing against the worship team at all it's the lord's air but anyways uh that's what i'd like to do and uh this month as well when we haven't agreed upon a particular friday night within the next couple of weeks we'd like to do i think two or three weeks we'd like to do an outdoor worship concert worship uh time together friday evening just come bring your chairs your mask, of course, and that kind of thing. Let's ease back into this, amen? Let's have a worship time together. We'll have some fires out here, those gas fires, kind of like creating a nice little ambiance or whatever. Let's come together and, and have church, amen? amen? No big preaching, you know, maybe a short devotion, but mostly worship. Stand out there. Let's lift our hands to heaven, amen? And so what else? I think that's about it. Uh, there are, you have communion today uh, that you were given, those little hermetically sealed cups and wafers. Uh, there is a barrel right around the corner there that if you want to toss them out after, you can. Also, if you prefer to give today uh, in a tangible way, like besides electronically, there is a, that little mailbox that's always kind of set up if you prefer to do it that way. All right, well, let's get on with business, shall we? I want to share today just a, a message. There's no three points to it. I'm very systematic. You, you, you kind of know that after 20 years. I, I, I like a systematic kind of approach to things. I like it to flow and that kind of thing. But sometimes God just gives you a message. And, you know, as I thought about all that's been going on these past weeks, a couple of weeks in particular, and really the peril that's out there, you know, it just led my heart, as I'm sure yours, to, to really consider the nation that we live in now. Folks, I got to tell you, I, I, I sometimes, and I've said this, I don't really recognize it from five years ago even. Ten years, when I got saved. Back in the 80s, it was like, you know, I don't know, it's different. There seems to be almost a different spirit over this land that once was one nation under God. And so I just want to share my heart this morning about the fact that it starts with us. It's going to begin, if anything, is going to begin, and, and I, I'm not 
telling you this morning or believing in any way or shape or form that the whole globe is going to be evangelized and saved for Jesus Christ before he comes. That's not going to happen. There are some theological beliefs out there that, that believe that the whole world must be evangelized and, and, and the majority for Christ before he comes back. But you know what? It's not. He's going to come back as a thief in the night. Amen. He's going to come when you least expect it. He's going to come to some of those who've been putting it off and say, one day when I get older, when I've achieved this, when I've done that, then I'll give my heart to the Lord. Don't play that game. <laughs> but this country is in peril, folks. This country is, is on the brink of anarchy. It doesn't take much. And our hearts are for all of those who have suffered injustice it always has I don't need need to kneel and repent only to God but that doesn't mean that we don't feel for those who've been treated unjustly and that there's been this racial smur that's kind of like wiped across of course of course but folks it's not with any political party it's not with any uh, institutionalized group that it begins you know where it begins it begins with the enemy who instigates I'll say it in, the, in this message that it's a spiritual battle that we are fighting folks please don't take it personal please don't look at your boss or your or your family members or those that you work with or, or whoever it is that they're the enemy they're not the enemy there's only one really <laughs> We are pawns for him at times, right? But there's only one enemy. And it can only be fought spiritually. Second Chronicles 7, verse 12. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. If I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, and my people who are called by my name, here it is, <laughs> will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. And I will heal their land. Amen. That is the promise we have, folks. That if my people who are called by my name, who really are mine, who've given their hearts to Jesus Christ, who love the Lord, oh, by the way, who aren't perfect, right <laughs> didn't say that but they'll humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways i'll hear from heaven i'll forgive their sin and then i'll heal their land folks it's always been my belief that the corruptive elements and behaviors a society chooses to indulge in and embrace and allows that seed to begin to germinate and grow, those elements will ultimately consume and be a contributing factor to that nation's downfall. It's impossible for a nation or a people or a society who love to be entertained by violence to be safe. Just say it. That is our music, our entertainment, our lust for wrongdoing, that which is debased and unnatural. The death industry of abortion, euthanasia, and all the rest. The widespread heinous crimes against humanity, both in our schools and on our streets. The list goes on will inevitably get the best of any society because we cannot mock God. <laughs> no matter how strong its economy, no matter how great its military, 
See, folks, the way I see it is we've become a society, and I'm not talking about us here this morning necessarily. I'm talking about our society in general that demands not to be governed by godly principles. Not to be a nation founded under the Judeo-Christians and moral ethics that did so. We're wanting not to be a nation under God. And my fear is now that God is beginning to oblige us. My fear now is that he is slowly giving us what we really want. A society without Christ. A society that's just the opposite. An anti-Christ society. That unleashes all of its hellish, chaotic lawlessness that we've seen lately. Folks, it's amazing. It doesn't take much anymore. It doesn't have to build up and build up and build up all of these gross injustices for finally our communities and our societies to lash out. It's on the brink. It's a hair trigger. It's always right there, ready to go. Have you noticed that? It doesn't take much. That's because I don't know that we're a nation under God anymore. I don't know that that's what we really want. Sure, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a small minority of people like us here today that want that. But for the most part, guess what? We want a society without godly restraints. Right? Problem is, we're not going to like that very well. You see, we want a good society. We want a, a safe society. We want a society, really, that, that enjoys the blessings of God, right? Except we want it without God. It doesn't exist. Listen to what Daniel Webster wrote back in the 1800s. 152 years ago, he wrote, if the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ is not felt through the length and breadth of a land, anarchy and misrule, degradation and, mer and misery, rather, corruption and darkness will reign without mitigation or end. I don't know about you, but old Mr. Webster seems like a modern day prophet, doesn't he? Folks, our country is on a dangerous brink. It really is. And I know I, I'm preaching to the choir. There are, there, are, there are many here that are right out there on the front line, either as policemen or healthcare workers, w wherever you are. You're seeing this. It's blatant, amen? Like we've never seen before. Oh, there have been times in history, but the frequency of these things happening is increasing exponentially. Our country is on a dangerous brink, arrogantly flirting with righteousness and lawlessness. And my fear is, is that God pretty soon is going to decide for us that we will be a society that is lawless. Because the truth is, we can't have our cake and eat it too, right? I know, this is a tough message. It's, it's, it's getting somewhere, though. I know I'm, I'm being descriptive about the way I see our country, and believe me, I still believe that it's, that, that, that it's good about America, that God loves and has a special place, that we're sending out missionaries, that we are, we are truly, truly desirous to see a move of God, to see people's hearts surrendered to Jesus Christ, to see a revival, I believe that. But I know that in these last days, evil pervades. But I also remember that grace, even though evil abounds, what, what does grace do? Grace, what does grace do? That was Italian. What does a grace do? <laughs> though evil abounds, grace abounds much more. 
God's grace abounds much more. Folks, I believe with all my heart that God wants to use the church like never before in this day and in this hour. That's why I said it's not happening to you, it's happening for you. It's not happening to us. We're not the victim. It's happening for us. So God can use us as a mighty, mighty element in society. And folks, for the life of me, I believe without, without shadow of a doubt that, that, that everyday Americans have not rejected Christianity. They've rejected lukewarm Christianity. They've rejected a form of godliness without the power thereof. That's what they've rejected. They're hungry for what's real. They're hungry for, for what you and I truly have in our hearts. They just need to see it. Not some religious rhetoric that sounds good but has no substance. Let's be strong, amen. Let's be Christians. Let's be the church. Let's not, let, let me take that back. Let's not just be Christians. Let's be disciples like we were intended to be. Did you know, listen to this, that only three times in the New Testament are you and I referred to as Christians? Must have been a slip of the tongue by Paul, I don't know. They're in Acts, Christians. Most of the time, you and I are described as disciples. You say, well, Pastor, no, no difference. Maybe. <laughs> I think that Christianity is such a generic term these days, isn't it? Everybody's a Christian if you like baseball and you were born in America. But a disciple's a little different. You see, a disciple is one who follows. A disciple is one who's willing to take it on the chin for the master. A disciple is one who's willing to be inconvenienced. A disciple is one who's willing to carry his cross and crucify himself. So what do I mean by all of this? Is, and I've done it too, I'm gonna stop the blame game. I'm gonna stop pointing my finger at all the national institutions that I know are wrong and saying that's what's wrong with America, that's what's wrong with this society, that's what's wrong with this community. You know, I'm not gonna do that anymore. Because it's incumbent upon the church for us to take a good first look at ourselves. There goes my notes. I don't even care. <laughs> and I'll be honest, I've joined my finger too, and it's fun to get together and say, you know, this and that and this and that. And listen, this truth, believe me, this truth to some of these things, what the ACLU says, and some of these political parties and some of those officials and public officials that are in that are making these laws and that kind of thing of course there's truth to that but you know it goes a lot deeper it goes a lot deeper it's a it's a it's a sin issue it's a heart issue that's why i said in the beginning of this it's not about it's not about you and i fighting against them us and them i don't need that sam i refuse it <laughs> thank you It's a heart issue. And so how do you tackle a heart issue on your knees before the Lord? Because that's what begins to change behavior. It's us being disciples. It's us being the church. It's not a, sp it's not a battle against flesh and blood, but it's a spiritual battle. And the only way a spiritual battle can be won is on its knees being sincere before our almighty God. And that I know you know. So I gotta ask you this morning, as I ask myself, are we truly being the church? Are we truly being disciples, followers of Jesus Christ. You know, we need to be brought back to the word where Jesus said this, you know, and we don't find it. This was commonplace back in his day in Matthew chapter 7. Listen to what he says, and I'm going to read it out of the message, that modern day paraphrase, because it, it puts a little oomph on it, okay? 
Don't pick on people or jump on their failures or criticize their faults unless, of course, you want the same treatment. That critical spirit has a way of boomeranging. It's easy to see a smudge on your neighbor's face and be oblivious to the ugly smear on your own. It's this whole show all over again playing a holier-than-thou part instead of just living your part. Wipe that ugly smear off your own face and you might be fit to offer a washcloth to your neighbor. <laughs> That's powerful, right? That puts it, it pretty straight. All that to say that before we engage in the blame game, we've got to take a good, solid, sober look at ourselves. <laughs> and ask, have we been complicit in any way in the way society has gone? Are we continuing to be the body of Christ constantly self-examining ourselves against scripture, not society, not what they think is justice. We're talking about the word of God because folks, this all has to start in the house of God first. It must begin with us in the house of God. Tony Campola, a Christian professor, sociology, he writes this, he says, Americans or American Christians have been lulled into an attractive, comfortable, and emotionally gratifying form of slavery. The socially prescribed middle-class lifestyle has become so normative in our churches that we discern little conflict between it and the Christian lifestyle described in the New Testament. What he's saying, he said there is an ever-increasing margin between the New Testament Christianity or discipleship and that which commonly is practiced today. You see, we think that as long as we're not sleeping around, as long as we're not ripping people off, as long as we're not looting and pillaging and killing people and, and being heinous with our, with our lifestyle, then we're pretty okay. We're doing okay. If we're, just, if we're coming to church, if we're giving our money, if we're sending our kids to youth and we're just kind of doing the do-gooder thing, then you know what? Then we're doing plenty for Christianity. Folks, it's going to take a lot more than that. And listen, there's nothing wrong with those things. Please don't misunderstand. I'm talking about right now we need to go to another level with our walk with God, with our sincerity with Him. It's going to take dying to self and carrying our cross. It's going to take loving less than mother, father, brother, sister, like Jesus said, right? It's going to take what was said of the disciples, listen, in Acts chapter 5, 41, where it says the apostles left the high council rejoicing that God had counted them worthy to suffer disgrace for the name of Jesus Christ. They rejoiced that God had counted them worthy to suffer persecution. That message doesn't flow very, very, very smoothly in our American culture. <laughs> it's going to take what Jesus said in John 15, 8. If the world hates you, guess what? They hated me first. And then he says in Luke 6, 22, Blessed are you when, when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Now, folks, I don't have time to qualify everything this morning. We don't walk around us and them. They hate us, but we love them. <laughs> That's no way to be, okay? We need, we need to be peacemakers. We need to be reconciliation people. Reconcilers is the word, actually. <laughs> Going around doing that, you know what? We're not, we're not trying to create a barrier, you know, that they hate us and we're walking around wondering who hates us and what they're going to do next. That's not what we're talking about here. But it's obvious, folks, that the rudiments of this world, the spirit of this world, 
is not the spirit of Jesus Christ. It's not the spirit that's living within you. So there is natural conflict. There just is. Well, there ought to be. There needs to be. It's light and darkness colliding, right? Folks, we're talking about living as disciples. Living as disciples. Not just Christians. And I, 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 I'm trying to stipulate between the two because today that term Christianity is very broad, very generic. So I want to define it a little further, a little deeper. We're disciples. We're followers of Jesus Christ. Even if it means inconvenience. Even if it means being misunderstood. Even if it means being hated and persecuted. That was the life of a disciple. Jesus said, didn't say, I should say. Jesus didn't say, be my Christians. <laughs> he said, be my disciples. That means I'm going to be a Christ follower. That means I'm going to follow after the Bible and the teachings of God's words, even if it's inconvenient and happens to interrupt my behavior and lifestyle. Being a disciple means loving others even when they not only don't love you back, but even when they hate you and despise you and they don't even know why. You know, that's the big thing about, about this world and, and, and the rudiments of this world. They, 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 don't, they don't really hate you. They hate something about you. True evil. And those who are given over to the darkness and the insidiousness of this world, there's something about you. You don't even have to open your mouth. They come in contact with you and they just feel something. They feel enraged. Saw a video the other day. A guy was touting, and he might have incited her a little bit, I don't know, but he was touting Trump, Trump, Trump. <laughs> and she just walked up and couldn't really talk to him and say anything. She just went, ah! Ah! for over a minute. <laughs> it's a reflection of really what society as a whole wants. A savage nation without God. And as I said in the beginning, my fear is, is that God will oblige us and give us ultimately what we want. We are just not going to like the consequences of that. And you know what? We can live for Christ the best that we can. And we may not be able to stop the tide of evil. There's no guarantee that this country isn't going to spiral down and continue. But that doesn't mean that we have to go with it. Amen? That means that we as the church can still make a difference. We can pray that a revival might, might, might break out. And God does that. He really does. Sometimes without the big preparation and the big fanfare, all of a sudden the Spirit of God just falls and drops and makes people so different than they ever were before. That's what God wants to do. God wants to do a miracle in our land. I believe that with all my heart. And he wants to use our hands and our heart to do that. Let's do it, amen? Let's demonstrate what real discipleship and real Christianity is. The heart, the love, the mercy, the wisdom of Jesus Christ in us. Folks, it starts with us before we can ever expect things to change let's invite God to change us and that's not an indictment I'm not suggesting that anybody here this morning hasn't done that but I'm asking you to join me going to another level amen to another place in the heart of God where we begin to see his power poured out like never before and he will do that if you are willing if I am willing
if we will just be the church, if we will just be disciples and follow after him with all of our heart, forsaking ourselves, abandoning ourselves, and saying, Lord Jesus, only what you want and what's done for you in this life is really what matters. God, would you, would you change my heart? Would it begin with me, I pray today? Please, God. And if that's your prayer this morning, if that's what you desire, I believe that God is beginning to move right now. As you're in your car, as you're outside, as you're letting the Lord and the Holy Spirit just get, uh, seep in and ponder your heart, God, would you do that? There's no complicated method here. It's God, I want to surrender and humble myself before you. That's simply it. I want you to have your way in my heart. And I believe that every heart here this morning wants to give you that kind of access. Hallelujah. Jesus, let it start with me. Let it start with me. Let's not return evil for evil, but God with love and mercy.